conservation of angular momentum in the case of gravitational acceleration actually figures really prominently into the history of astronomy. Uh, one of Kepler's laws for the motion of planets in our solar system, Kepler's second law, uh, is called the equal areas and equal times law. Uh, and it's actually a consequence of the conservation of angular momentum under the influence of gravity. So here's a uh, cartoon of a planet circling the sun in its orbit. All planets move in elliptical orbits, and so here I've, I've exaggerated the ellipticity of a planetary orbit. Here's the sun at the center of the orbit, or sorry, at one of focus of the orbit. And here's the planet moving around the sun uh, in its elliptical orbit. If we imagine there's some amount of time, tau one, during which the planet is over here in its orbit, uh, a vector pointing from the sun to the planet sweeps out an area, A1, in that time tau one. If we wait about half an orbit later, the planet makes it around to this side of its orbit, and we imagine that the same radius vector sweeps out an area A2 in an amount of time tau two. And so Kepler's second law says that if tau one and tau two are equal, if the time between those different points uh, in the orbit are equal, then the area swept out by the uh, radius vector during those two times is going to be exactly equal. So again, if tau one here is equal to tau two, then even though uh, this area here in the ellipse is long and skinny, it'll be exactly equal to the area over here, which is short and squat. So that means that the planet has to be moving very slowly around in its orbit over here because the radius vector is so big, even a little time means it sweeps out quite a lot of area. So the planet has to move very slowly when it's far from the sun and very quickly when it's near to the sun in order for these two areas to be equal. Okay, let's see how that's related to the conservation of angular momentum. So here I've drawn a very skinny vector, a very skinny uh, triangle swept out by the radius vector over a very, very short amount of time. So here's the uh, area of this triangle, uh, dA. You imagine there's an angle uh, for the triangle, which is d theta, so that's a very small uh, angle. And the distance from the sun to the planet during this time is very roughly just r. So there's r vector uh, for the radius uh, vector there. Because that angle is so small, we can treat the area as roughly uh, equal to a triangle's area. And then, of course, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So in this case, our base is just going to be r times d theta. So that's the length here, that's this length. And then the, the height is just the height of the triangle, which in this case is just a radius. So the, the area of that triangle is going to be 1 half r d theta times r, or 1 half r squared d theta. Now keep in mind the tangential velocity, that is the component of the velocity vector which points tangent to the radius vector, uh, is r times d theta dt. And so we can show that r times d theta is really just r times d theta dt times a little amount of time dt. That's the tangential velocity again. And so uh, the base of the triangle is really just the tangential velocity times dt, the short amount of time during which the planet is in motion. So we can rewrite that a little area dA right there. That's 1 half r times the tangential velocity times dt. And now remember, the cross product selects out the portions of two vectors that are perpendicular to one another. And so we can write r times the tangential velocity as vector r crossed into vector velocity because r is the radial uh, vector and so the only component of the velocity that will remain is the component of the velocity tangential to the radius vector, which is, of course, the tangential velocity. So r times the tangential velocity is really just equal to the magnitude of the vector r crossed into the vector v. And so then, of course, uh, the velocity vector is just the momentum vector divided through by the mass of the planet. And so we can see that the little area of this triangle uh, is actually 1 over 2 times the mass times the magnitude of r crossed into the momentum vector times a short amount of time dt. And of course, r crossed into b, that's just the angular momentum of the, of the planet. And so the little bit of area for this triangle is really just 1 over 2 times the mass times the magnitude of the angular momentum vector times a short amount of time. Now, the only force acting on our planet is a gravitational pull from the sun. And we already know that a radial force like that cannot change the angular momentum of a planet going around in its orbit. So that means the angular momentum is a constant, and therefore the time derivative of the area swept out by that radius vector, that's really just the angular momentum uh, 
over twice the mass of the planet. In this case, it's just going to be a constant. So this proves Kepler's second law, equal areas and equal times. In other words, uh, areas are swept out at the same rate throughout the ellipse. What that means is when the planet is very far from the, from the sun and the radius vector is really big, uh, the planet is moving very slowly because the radius vector sweeps out a lot of area in just a short amount of time. That those areas are, are equal uh, to the area swept out when the planet is very close to the sun and therefore the planet has to be moving very quickly here because these areas are very short and squat.